students a long vacation, is it? Now focus on your studies. Subject Biology Lesson 2 Cell, the unit of life. Today you are going to learn the invention of the microscope. The first microscope was constructed by Dutch scientist Antony van Leeuwenhoek. He had constructed about 400 microscopes because his hobby was grounding the lenses and observing things. He used to observe many things because he was a spectacle vendor. He has observed so many things and while observing, he observed small organisms. He has used biconvex lens and he observed many small organisms and he called them as small or animalcules. And later, these were called simple microscopes. A simple microscope magnifying power is said to be 200 times. He had made a microscope as shown below. In this picture, you will find a platform and a screw and a lens and a focus knob. He had observed pond water and many things he found around him. He had found he had found out small structures later called them as microorganisms. He named them as small creatures and later after invention of compound microscope by Robert Hooke, an English scientist, these creatures are called unicellular organisms. Robert Hooke, an English scientist, developed a microscope by using two lenses for achieving greater magnification. These were called compound microscope. Compound microscope. He has placed an object on a stage and light from oil was thrown on it by means of concave mirror. You can find a, a long eyepiece, concave mirror, light focused by using oil lamp. Hook ex examined a thin slice of carp tissue under his microscope and observed that it was made of tiny compartments and called them as cells. Later, several microscopes were made and today we have an ordinary compound microscope which has an magnification power up to 2000 times. Electron microscope. The invention of electron microscope added further to the unknown facts about cells. It gives magnification over 2 lakh times as against the ordinary compound microscope which means 2 lakhs into 2000 times. In electron microscope, a beam of electrons which are bent by magnets is used. You can see the picture of electron microscope. Now we are moving to the next part of the lesson, cell theory. Robert Hooke discovered cell and cell theory is propounded. Matthias Schlieden, a German bot botanist, observed plants and announced that plants are made up of cells. Theodor Schwann, a German zoologist, observed animals and announced that animals are made up of cells. They declared all animals and plants are made up of smaller units of structural and functional called as cells. Rudolf Karl Virchow stated that all cells arise from pre-existing cells. Thus, the cell theory states the cell is the smallest unit of structure of all living things. The cell is the unit of function of all living things. All cells arise from 
pre-existing cells. All cells are similar in their basic structures and functions such as life processes. Cell. The cell is fundamental, structure, structural and functional unit of all living beings. The cell is a structural unit means all parts of organisms are made up of cells. That means if you take hand, legs, brain, nose, skin, any part of an organism or leaf, stem, root, any part of the plant, they are made up of cells. The cell is a functional unit means every activity of living organism is the outcome of cellular activity. That means if the cell does breathing, organism breathes. If the cell takes food, organism, organism takes food. That is the uh, activity of the cell is the functional unit. The cell die and are replaced means formation of cells by the division of cells from the pre-existing cells is a never ending process. That means growth takes place in an organism by the division of the cells. All lives start from a single cell means single cell called zygote or egg forms into an organism by various cell divisions. A larger an organism, greater the number of cells in its body. Based on this, organisms are classified into single-celled organisms. Here I like to say, larger the organism, elephants. Elephants will have large number of cells, whereas ants will have less number of cells. Based on this, the organisms are classified into single-celled organisms. That is, the organism will have only one cell. Example, amoeba. Some organisms will have many cells. The, that many cells only form into an organism. For example, olvax and spirogyra. In our in such organisms, we don't find any organs or organ systems. And multi-celled organisms like man, mango tree, banyan tree, etc. In such organisms, we find organs, organ systems, etc. To suit functional requirement of cells, cells vary great greatly in their shapes. Cells are, these cells are disc-like, polygonal, rectangular, cuboid, thread-like, branched and even irregular. For example, if you take epithelial cells in our body, they are cylindrical. If you take the striated muscles, they are banded. If you take smooth muscle cells they are spindle shaped if you take our nerve cells they are branched and long thread like if you take guard cells they are like kidney shape if you take amoeba the cells are amoeboid that is shapeless irregular they can have any shape and human red blood cells are circular biconcave they pass through narrow capillaries and transportation uh, is their function. They transport oxygen and carbon dioxide. White blood cells are amoeboid in shape and they move with the help of pseudopodia. They can squeeze through out of the capillary walls. Nerve cells are long to conduct impulse from distant parts of the body to the brain and vice versa. That means they take impulses from the organs, take them, take them to the brain and in return they bring back the responses from the brain and concerned organs they return. Muscle cells are long 
and contractile to pull or squeeze the parts to bring the movement. God's sense of stomata and the leaves are being shaped and they help in opening and closing of the stomata. And coming to the size of the cells. Cells vary very much in their size. Cells are very small and they are seen only through the microscope. Their size varies from 0 0.3 to 0 0.5 microns. 3 microns to even sometimes the bigger cells can be 3 centimeters long and 3 centimeters in width also. Like that their size varies depending upon the place they are. The smallest cells are the bacteria, red blood cells. The longest cells are the nerve cells. The largest cells are ostrich egg cells. The longest cells are elephant's nerve cell. Cells are generally remain small in size. This is because of two main reasons. Different regions of cell can communicate with each other rapidly for cell to cell function effectively. Cells have large surface area volume ratio for greater diffusion of substances in and out of the cell. The larger surface area relative to volume of the cell ensures greater diffusion of nutrients into the cell. Metabolic waste from the interior to the outside of the cell. Respiratory gases that is oxygen into the cell and carbon dioxide out of the cell. Any damage to the cell can be easily repaired. Hence the cells are small in size. So children, today we can learn this. I hope you understood the size, shape and the theory of a cell. Now we will move on to the assignment. The assignment is as followed. Name the following. Structural and functional unit of the living organism. Number two, a kind of microscope that consists of single biconvex lens. Magnification of electron microscope. The mirror used in a compound microscope. The next main, differentiate between the following. Hooks and Hawks microscope. Single cellular and multicellular organisms. Mention the following. Function of the following. Number one, WBC. That means white blood capsule. Number two, nerve cells. Number three, guard cells. Draw the following diagrams. Guard cell, nerve cell, amoeba. Thank you.